In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Ronin wraps, which are occlusion bands. You might have heard them called blood flow restriction bands. So we're gonna be briefly talking about why you would want to use occlusion bands, how to use them, and then the rest of the video is gonna be a dedicated review to this particular brand of wraps. If you wanna to jump to any particular section of the video, I will timestamp that on the screen. But first, hi, my name is Ryan Treadway, founder of TreadawayTraining.com, where we help busy professionals get more results in less time through online training. If you want more information on body transforming training and nutrition topics every Saturday, consider subscribing. Now, the first thing to talk about is what is occlusion training or blood flow restriction training and why would you want to include it in your program at all? Now, when it comes to muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth, there are three primary drivers. You have mechanical tension, you have muscle damage, and then you have metabolic stress. And that's where the blood flow restriction training comes in. So when you tie these bands down, so what you'll do is you'll take one of these bands, you can do this with any muscle that is on a limb of your body. So you can do biceps, triceps, forearms, quads, hamstrings, or calves. And so what you'll do is you'll take one of these bands, you'll slide it on whatever body part that you're wanting to train, and then you'll tie off at the base of that muscle. So you can tie off at the base of the shoulder or you can tie off at the base of the hip. And what will happen is you have your arteries which deliver blood to the muscles and then you have your veins which return blood to the heart. So when your blood goes to the muscles, that is an active delivery. So when your heart pumps, it pumps the blood into the muscles. But when the blood returns to the heart, that is passive. So there's not as much force with the blood that is returning to the heart. So what happens is when you tie your limbs off with these bands, you tie them off tight enough that it does not restrict the arterial delivery of blood to the muscles, but it does prevent the venous return of blood to the heart. So what happens is, so if you tie your arms off, for example, you're doing your reps, your blood is pumping into your biceps, for example, but it's not returning to the heart. So you have blood pooling up in the muscle and you have all of these metabolites that are surrounding the muscle as you're doing these reps. And so you're creating a metabolically stressful environment for the muscle and that's how this type of training works. And there are a few situations where you might want to include blood flow restriction training. And one of those would be to work around an injury. So let's say you have elbow pain or knee pain. You could use these bands, you could use a lot less weight than you would normally use so you're not stressing that joint that's injured and you can still at the very least maintain the muscle mass that you have or even gain muscle mass while not also aggravating that injury. And along that same line of thinking, you could also use these for prehab. So if you're the type of person you like to lift a lot of weight, whether you're a power lifter or an Olympic lifter or just somebody who likes to lift heavy, so if you're doing a lot of movements that are heavy and very taxing on the joints, like squat, bench, deadlift, stuff like that, then you can use these on your secondary lifts so that you're not adding even more fuel to the fire when it comes to uh, taxing those joints. And then the third reason is just a standalone training. So you could use this in addition to the training that you're already doing. So you could throw in a couple of blood flow restriction exercises at the end of a workout session one to two times per week as just an added muscle growth stimulus. And the last thing that I wanna mention is even with this occlusion training, you would still want to apply the basic principles of progressive overload so you would want to increase your weight or increase your reps over time so that you're increasing the stimulus on your muscle over time. Now, in terms of how to use these specifically in the protocol that you'll use, as I've mentioned already, you'll take one of these and you'll put it on both arms or both legs, depending on which muscle you're working at the time. And then let's just say for sake of example, we're gonna be doing bicep curls. So you'll slide one on each arm, cinch it down, you'll get it to about a seven out of 10 discomfort level. Remember, we don't want to restrict arterial delivery of blood to the muscle. So we don't wanna get it so tight that we're preventing blood from getting to the muscle. We just wanna prevent uh, the blood from leaving the muscle. So you get it about a seven out of 10 discomfort level. And then as you are doing your reps, you'll notice that discomfort level will 
increase as the blood gets trapped into the muscle. So you don't wanna get it too tight, you just wanna get it tight enough. And if this is your first time doing occlusion training, then you should err on the side of caution. It's better to not get it tight enough than to get it too tight and cause damage. So if you don't get it tight enough, you can always cinch it down a little bit tighter with your next set. Now, if you feel like your muscle is literally about to explode during your sets, uh, then you might wanna loosen it up just a little bit and then continue on with your reps. Now for the protocol that you'll use, you'll do 30, 15, 15, 15. And so the way that'll work is you'll do a set of 30, you'll rest 15 to 20 seconds, you'll do a set of 15, you'll rest 15 to 20 seconds, you'll do another set of 15, you'll rest 10 to 20 seconds, and then you'll do a third set of 15, and then you'll repeat this for two sets. You'll leave the bands on for each cluster, but you'll loosen them between the two clusters. So you'll do 30, 15, 15, 15, you'll loosen them, let your arms rest, take a little bit of a break, you'll come back and you'll do 30, 15, 15, 15 again. And another thing to keep in mind is that you're gonna be doing a lot less weight when you're doing blood flow restriction training than you would normally do for say, just a standard three sets of 10. So for example, if we're doing a, a seated incline dumbbell curl, I would usually use about 35 pounds or so for three sets of 10. But with this, I would only be using about 10 pounds. So you're gonna be using about a third of the weight that you would normally use for a standard set. Now getting into the review of these specific bands, I like these a lot. Previously, uh, when I've done blood flow restriction training, I just used quick release tourniquets. This was back when it was really first starting to become popular again, back in around 2015 or 2016. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of dedicated bands on the market. So I just had some quick release tourniquets. I eventually broke one of them and then I kind of didn't do blood flow restriction training for a while. And so recently I picked up these so that I could reincorporate it into my program. And these have a few great things going for them. One of the things that I like that I consider a pro that some people may consider a con is these are a little bit thinner than some of the other blood flow restriction training bands on the market and they're very stretchy. Now, there are some that are not elastic. They are a firm, rigid band, and they don't stretch, they don't give at all. And some people prefer that, but I actually think that that's a bad idea to go with a rigid strap versus something like this, which is uh, stretchy, because as I said earlier, you don't wanna get the bands so tight that you cause some kind of damage to your muscle and you uh, restrict arterial delivery of blood to the muscles. And it's easy to get those bands too tight because when you first put them on there, you may not realize whether or not you have them too tight until after you've started your set and that blood's trying to rush into the muscles. So with those, there's a little bit more room for error and that's why i like to go with a stretchy band because it does allow a little bit more forgiveness if you do get it slightly too tight uh, it's a little bit more forgiving with a stretchy band versus if you have a rigid band now that actually does bring up another pro and con for these bands so a pro for these bands is it has this little management loop right here so when you cinch it down on your arm you have this little loop that holds the slack instead of the band just kind of flapping around with whatever's loose after you pull it through the buckle now that said you will have to cinch these down pretty tight and there will be a lot of band left over so while there is this management band here there's still gonna be a lot of loose flapping around while you're doing your set. So that doesn't bother me specifically. I could really care less. It doesn't affect me at all. But if you are someone that it will bother you having this extra flap flopping around while you're doing your set, then that is something to keep in mind. And then another thing is it has this nice little uh, branding patch sewn on here. I mean, it's a high quality, nice looking, patch, but I actually wish that it wasn't there because this management loop right here is very tight. And so when you're cinching this down and trying to get everything adjusted, and then you're you know, trying to deal with this, you have this thick patch sewn onto this band and it's already a really tight loop and you're trying to pull that 
through the little loop and get everything situated, it's just kind of annoying. So I, I really wish that that wasn't there. So that's also something to keep in mind. Now the last and biggest thing that these bands have going for them is for only $25.99 at the time of recording, you actually get two sets of bands. So you get the arm bands and you get the leg bands and you get a little bag to store them in. So you get all of that for only 26 bucks when with other bands you get one set and then you have to buy the other set separately and they're typically the same price or even more expensive. The ones that I was looking at before I found this specific set, it was $30 for only the armbands and then you would have had to have bought the legs separately for another 30 bucks and I don't believe they came with a bag either. So for $5 less, you get two sets and you get the bag versus the one set without the bag. At the time that I was looking to purchase new blood flow restriction bands, I was actually only looking to purchase a set for the arms. I had never used blood flow restriction with my legs before, but when I found this set, I was like, hey, these are $5 less and you get the legs so I could incorporate blood flow restriction training with my legs and save five bucks. So really, this is probably the best set on the market in my personal opinion. I, I did purchase these with my own money. I would purchase these again. I would recommend you purchase these if you have any interest in blood flow restriction training. Let me know down in the comments if you think this is a product that you would like to check out. And make sure to join us next Saturday. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different than usual, something that we've not done before. Next week is actually my birthday, so we're gonna be doing a little bit of a special video next week, so make sure to check that out. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. If you want more content just like this, consider subscribing, or you can check out one of the videos that will be up on the screen. You can also check us out on the Treadway Training Blogcast. We're there every Sunday at 3 p.m. That's treadwaytraining.com slash blog. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you tomorrow. I didn't do the intro. Oh, no. But before we get into the video, but first, hi, my, but first, my name is, but first, hey, hey.